time when I try to make a video is when the kids decide to flock over here. Does that happen to you? Okay, since we're not doing anything today or going anywhere today, we're just staying at this campsite. I thought it was a good opportunity for me to make this video, which goes through all my gear that I use for vlogging for these last three plus weeks of daily vlogging. So I'll first start out with just like the bare essentials and I have way more gear than I actually need. I can't throw that right now. I can't throw. Marlene, can you play with Cody? Not just the kids, also the puppy. So I'm not gonna go over, well, so I'll start out with like just the main components. The shots that you've seen, the shots of me talking to the camera, the shots of me driving and talking while I'm driving, the time lapses as I'm driving down the road, and obviously the drone shots. And then at the end, maybe I'll go over just a little bit of my equipment for editing while in the van. So the, the two main cameras that I use is this GoPro Hero 7. It's really compact, it's easy, it's discreet. I can kind of take this everywhere. And if I need to kind of do some kind of talking shot where I'm talking to somebody, I can clip it and then just kind of angle it. So I can be hands-free if I want to do that. So people aren't really caught off guard or feel nervous with the big camera in front of them. And then I can also set this down somewhere on a platform and just like do a time lapse really quickly. So this is like a big component and I just got this this last spring. So this has been a really key factor of being able to make this daily vlog. Because the GoPro Hero 7 has such good stabilization that I don't get as much of that GoPro like unstabilized shaky footage as I used to when I use my Hero 4 or my Hero 5 session for that matter. I'll show you those other cameras. So this is number one. Number two is actually this camera I'm filming on. So to show you this, I will switch to this camera. So this camera, so this is a Sony a7 III and it's got a 10 to 18 millimeter crop sensor lens. What's the model? It's the SCL 1018 and it's constant aperture f4 all the way across. So that's pretty nice. And what I've got on here is a KNF variable ND filter, which is a good ND filter, not great, decent ND filter, especially at the price. You can see it's a little bit bigger than the than the actual uh, threads of the lens itself. So I'm using a step up ring to get it to this. This is a 82 millimeter and the native ring is a 62 millimeter. I have it stepped up for a couple reasons. One is because it's uh, it's really wide. So when you have one that's just exactly the same size at 62, you can get a little bit of corner showing when you're zoomed all the way out. And also I got this because it also works with one of my other lenses. So it's kind of a two for one. So this is what I have. And up here is a Rode Video Micro. And on here I have a arc Swiss mount. So I can detach this and put this on somewhere else. And I store this in the van and I have it mounted to a, a, a Swiss arc Swiss mount that's on the ceiling. So when I'm driving, this is mounted. You may have seen this in some of our driving shots, that this is mounted to the ceiling between me and Marlene. And I have, I have a USB plug coming out to charge it. And this can be charged over USB-C or micro USB. So that makes it really nice. And then this is just some, you know, generic mini tripod, which I find works out really well for me because it's sturdy and I have it kind of mounted backwards. So the stick is hanging out this way. So I can angle it and I can talk like this. Or if I want to, I set it down really quick. I like this over a Gorilla Pod because it's sturdy. I can set it down and now we're about to falling. So this is my this is my main sort of mirrorless interchangeable lens camera rig. And some of the B-rolls that you're seeing is use is using a different lens. I have a couple lenses for this. The other lens that I use, um, I should get it to show you. This is the other main lens that I use. It is a Sigma 18 to 35. 
constant aperture f1.8. It's also for crop sensor camera. So I'm actually not utilizing the full potential of this Sony a7 III, being that it's a full frame sensor. But these are the lenses that I had. And this one I had to buy, but instead of buying an expensive full frame version of this, which I think would be like the 16 to 35, it was way more expensive and it was way bigger. So this 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 crop sensor lens that I have on there now, the 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 E the F4 10 to 18 uh, has great image stabilization. It's constant aperture, um, all metal construction, small and way more compact. So I shoot in crop mode almost all the time. And then this one I have it. It's an EF mount, and I have it on a on the Sigma MC11 adapter to adapt it to the Sony E mount. And what I found is that this works pretty much just as good as a native lens autofocus wise. So this is really great. A lot of that super shallow depth of field slow-mo stuff is shot on this lens. So I put this lens on when necessary. Okay, so next camera. This one is my Hero 5 Session. This is the one that I mount to the crossbars of the van on the roof when I drive. So all the time lapses are shot on this. I use this one because this is waterproof natively. So if it rains, if bugs get on it, stuff happens outside, I feel much more comfortable with this one being outside. And it's also, it's also much cheaper than the Hero 7. So even though the Hero 7 is also waterproof, but I have this port taken out, the charging port, because it's much easier to charge it without taking it out of the case. So that makes it not waterproof when it's open like that. So this is what I use for the driving time lapses. And then I have an old Hero 4 Black mounted to a GoPro suction cut mount on the upper left corner of the windshield. So this is the camera that I use for all the driving shots that you see of me sitting in the driver's seat talking. And then obviously the last camera, last but not least, is my DJI Mavic Air. Love the DJI Mavic Air for several reasons. One is that it's the smallest package, even smaller than the Spark in travel mode. But obviously, it's got folding arms, so when it folds out, it's bigger. But, but it's a much more compact drone when it's in the stowed position. If you watch the channel for a while, then you'll know that I used to have the Phantom 4 Pro which is an amazing drone with a one inch sensor, really great low light, great picture quality. I sold that and I sold the Spark to get this as kind of a compromise to have the best of both worlds, compact size and good picture quality. And I don't regret that decision. And because we're traveling in a way smaller vehicle now and overseas, this has been great. So that's pretty much it for all of the camera equipment that I have. And to edit on the road, it's a little tricky because we don't always have, actually we really have hookups and I need to charge my computer for work. We have solar in the car, but we can get a lot of overcast days like this where it may not be good for a while. So I upgraded my computer recently in the spring too, to a, um, this is a 2018 Dell XPS 15. It's sort of a maxed out configuration, but I got it for a really good deal on sale. And this has been life changing because I can charge this over USB-C and <clears throat> battery life is great. And it's super fast compared to my last computer, which was like a five year old uh, MacBook, MacBook Pro. So this is, I can edit a whole 25 minute video in, you know, two hours or so max and it will run the whole edit off of the battery and render and I'll copy that to my phone and I'll upload it from my phone. So this has been a really critical piece and I use Adobe Premiere Pro for editing. Um, to charge this I either plug it in to the inverter in the van when we have plenty of sunlight but recently we also got this. This is a Dometic PLB40. It is a 40 amp hour 480 watt hour 
lithium iron phosphate battery pack. It's awesome because I can charge directly through the output ports, 12 volt output ports, and I can also charge it through the DC input ports off of the cigarette lighter when I'm driving. So I'd, I don't have to rely on the solar being good. So even during the day when we're not getting a ton of solar and ton of sun to charge the house battery for the van, I can still charge my computer and get the edits out and work on my computer for, for work and not really worry that I'm gonna drain the battery down and have the fridge shut down and, and have no lights and can't charge our devices and things like that. <clears throat> so this is an addition that we added like I wanna say a little less than a month ago. And this has been really great. And as you guys know that we work with Dometic, so they did provide this battery for us, although they did not pay me anything to specifically market this battery bank. But so far, it's been amazing. But there's obviously other lithium battery banks out there that you can choose as well. But this is the one that's been really amazing for me. That's basically it. That's all the gear that I use to make this vlog possible. And as usual, I'll put all the links of this gear in the description below if any of you are interested in checking out more details or if you want to purchase. Some of those links will be Amazon Associate links, so I'll get a cut from it if you guys click through and buy something. And if you do, I appreciate it. It helps this channel. That's basically it for today. We're going to get back to clean up our uh, mess that we made for dinner. Thanks for watching this video, as always. See you guys tomorrow.